Okay, and welcome to Outrun the Fog, casted by me, Colin. And today we're gonna have a very uh, interesting matchup of Dead Future versus Cynic. And we're starting here with Cynic on the serves and <laughs> Dead Future on the killer in our Doctor set on the Wretched Shop. And with an uh, early shot coming in, <clears throat> we're going to be seeing our first chase happening onto our Meg here. <clears throat> and a couple shocks coming through, but playing patient, not getting the pallet drop, and uh oh, a slight misread uh, by our killer, but he still gets the hit anyways. The pallet is dropped, the stun comes in, and our doctor, our very own Cookie, is going to be uh, chasing the Meg down here, and we're gonna see a body block in there. I'm sorry, I don't know uh, why I'm looking at the serve perspective. I'm gonna look at the killer perspective. Uh, gets a hit onto uh, the Clinton, a body block, and chooses to switch off of our Meg and go for uh, go for our Ultra right here. And it looks like there's going to be another body block, a third body block coming in for <clears throat> our survivors here. So that's, uh, you know, a brief few seconds in the game, and we already have three survivors injured, and I'll be honest, I think this is going to be our first down. Yes, that's it, unless a whiff happens, but no. That is our first down, uh, down of the game at five generators remaining. Uh, give me a quick second. I need to check something really fast. Okay. Okay. Uh, apologies. Just wanted to make sure something was <clears throat> quick. Yeah, that's our first hook. And as you can see, the pain res was utilized. And it didn't have this gen. So it looks like there's a gen somewhere off in the distance that's pretty progressed. At least more so than that gen we have here. But to be fair, that's only 5%. So... It may have hit a gen. Oh, wait, never mind. We actually see the gen that it pain res right there. Uh, and it's sitting at a smooth 5%, so it looks like... Honestly, the survivors don't have much gen pressure, so this is going to be a very uh, quick, you know, uh, camp to second stage here for very little gen progress. Uh, survivors are probably sitting across, like, as far as they can from these generators. They try and get as much uh, progress as possible. But, uh, I guess I'm gonna eat my own words as we see a survivor coming in here. Maybe for a double save. Yeah, that's right, for a double save. And, uh, oh. Uh, unfortunately, it's kind of just taken right out of, uh, Cookie's hands here as they get the unhook pretty much for free. They were able to reset in time and have somebody come here for the unhook, so that will not be a camp to second stage. However, that will be, uh, Cookie committing to the tunnel out here. But, as I mentioned before, I mean, that doesn't leave a lot of time for your survivor team to get much gen progress, so... Uh, we did see the gen uh, up on my main building having quite a bit of progress, so I imagine that will pop soon, but... My guess is that that's the only generator with a lot of progress here. Ultra is putting up a very good chase, making sure he's making all the right reads on our killer here as they're forced to shock again and again and again without really much to show for it. But, uh... Ultra, unfortunately, does not read the mind game correctly and, uh... does go down here. You know, that gen on top side is taking a while to pop. I wonder if uh, it got hit by Merciless Storm uh, and the survivors missed a skill check or two. <clears throat> but now we're seeing the second hook coming in uh, for Dead Future here. They have two gens that are very progressed, actually. That is their first gen of the game popping. We'll see what more uh, they might be able to pop in this time here before they most likely come in for another double. <clears throat> the reset comes out on the Lusty. And... Jen still is not pumped, despite having so much progress earlier. Oh, but Cookie does find uh, the reset there. Uh, or at least what was the reset a few seconds ago. He catches uh, Lusty out with his shock, and now he's finding Nini, coming in for the double once again. And it looks like we're going to have a repeat of uh, what just happened. And, you know, I think, uh, I think Cookie wants to play it a little bit differently this time. Just accepting the tag and then getting the BT out of uh, our Ultra here. 
and once again just committing for the funnel out. Uh, and when you're at four gens like this, this is a very, uh, very good decision to make. Uh, but here comes the, uh, the Nancy with a pallet drop instead of a body block, uh, just dropping the pallet for Ultra so that he can make as much distance as possible without Cynic having to give up a free tag. He did get that window vault, so he's gonna make a lot of distance all the way back to Crane. Which, unfortunately, our killer didn't break the pallet earlier, so... <clears throat> it looks like he's gonna have to break that now just to make sure that... Oh! Ah! And a very good read by our killer here. Seeing Ultra's not making any distance farther towards Shaq, uh, just assumes that he's decided to double back around Crane. And with the red light on Ultra, he can't see the Doctor uh, mind gaming him, so... He ends up eating the, uh, the M1, getting put on the hook, and dying at two gens remaining. That's a very good position for our killer to be in here, quite honestly. And it looks like we're going to be taking a uh, chase onto our next survivor. It sounds like Nancy. And that is correct. She's going to make distance to Shaq here. He might be able to just shock this. Yep, and gets a, a tag. But I think he's going to be forced to break this pallet. And then with this red stain on Nancy here, it might be difficult for her to read any mind games, so I think that she's just going to commit to kind of holding W around the map and pre-dropping where she can, and, you know, just trying to play tiles where she can see the actual killer himself, rather than, you know, unsafe, uh, unsafe tiles where she has to play by red stain. A good mind game on the long wall window comes out from our cookie, and I think that this is going to be a hit and down. That is correct. She is under a pallet. A pallet save could come through, but it's unlikely and correct. That's a pain res for our killer. That's 25%. Uh, that's 25% off the most progressed gen, and I think he doesn't want to camp. He just wants to go for uh, these gens. Maybe get another fresh hook in into endgame, and uh, maybe play for Lusty as the <laughs> endgame begins to get the most uh, hook stages possible and the most fresh hooks possible. A free drop comes out from uh, Nev here. Excuse me. <clears throat> and with the zone coming in, uh, Nev chooses not to play that kind of unsafe pallet and chooses to go through the window here on the main building. Nev is not looking to get zoned, so they move away from the main building towards the jungle gym, and Cookie decides now is the time to drop chase. Possibly assuming that the chase might be going on for too long here. Uh, he does find the gen that the other survivors are working on. I see scratch marks, but there's no Ninny around. Uh, actually, never mind. He sees the blood pool, so actually, it turns out Ninny just left before Ace even could. And he's going to be committing to Ninny here, who's injured, which is going to make this chase a lot easier for Cookie. <laughs> Fortunately, the pre drop doesn't come through. So now. A body block is going to be coming through. I was going to say, he's going to have to play the 50-50, but you don't really need to play the 50-50 if a body block comes in, don't you? And honestly, unfortunately for Cynic, this is uh, uh, another fresh hook for uh, Dead Future here. You, you know, you played for the body block and you prevented the down for another couple seconds, but this is a fresh hook and another scorch hook, so this is actually preventing you from getting to endgame even longer, and... It also awards more points to the killers, so this is kind of a rough position for them to be in. Their most progressed gen just got, uh, got, um, progressed, excuse me. Um, and now he's going to be taking chase on our Ninny here. And it looks like he's just patrolling the gens really quickly, seeing what he wants to do next. 
And it looks like what he's gonna do is commit to Ninny here, who is snapping out of it. And is gonna take it down pretty much for free. And it looks like Koki is not content with this. I think that knowing that the other two survivors are injured and they have that very highly progressive gen there, uh, Koki wants to go back, maybe play for a, a three-man slug here and... Yeah, that's what's gonna happen. A very good read by Cookie. The Merciless Storm comes in uh, just in the nick of time. And it looks like oh, a force grab. Honestly, I was gonna say, it looks like this might be a 4k1, but uh, he does actually uh, force pull, which prevents that from happening. Uh, this is gonna be another pain res, though, I believe. Uh, actually, I'll be honest with you, I don't think that our ace here gets to that in time. Cookie made the right decision, didn't even decide to go for a pain res, and instead decided to just go for the hook closer to the slug, and yeah, a very incredible performance by our Cookie here. This is going to be a 4k1 on Team Cynic, which is a very big powerhouse in comp right now. Uh, so this is by no means like uh, something to look over. This is an incredible performance. And yeah, with the down coming in on Lusty, no Unbreakable, no Deli, none of that to speak of. That is going to be the 4K1, uh, especially considering, you know, he knows exactly where uh, Mini is due to the constant screaming uh, with them being in Tier 3. So uh, <laughs> that is uh, definitely... Um, a very commendable performance. And he does find the uh, the Nancy. Probably gonna pick and hook in basement, and uh, that will be uh, GG's uh, for this set. I'm sure Cookie is very happy with that uh, performance, um, and it is it is once again a very good performance. So we'll have to see if Cynic uh, can meet that performance by getting. A 4K1 and tying the set, or if they can beat that and get a 4K2. Um, but we will see in the next round of set one, and I will see you all on that set.
Okay, welcome back to <clears throat> Dead Future versus Cynic. Here we have Cynic on the killer and Dead Future on the serve. Of course, as per usual, we have Ultra killing for Team Cynic here. And uh, it looks like uh, Ultra walked in and saw somebody basically across the map. So we're going to be taking that first chase very early and that first hit very early. Uh, due to a bit of a delay from Cookie on his movement. <clears throat> so we're gonna be seeing that first chase uh, right away in Corrupt Zone. <laughs> and with a shot coming in and ping in play, uh, I don't know if uh, Cookie is gonna be able to do much here, but a body block coming in right away. We're kind of seeing a repeat, uh, kind of like what happened during Cynic's game where you get that first chase and then you just have people coming in uh, funneling the next serve. Uh, to the next place with body blocks. I wouldn't be surprised if another body block comes here and just like that we see a perfect repeat of what happened with the Cynic serves. But I think that our Quentin here might have a little bit of an issue as they're not really able to make anything and yeah they are going to be taking that down just like Cynic at five gens remaining. However it looks like there's quite a bit of gen pressure coming out from these serves very early, but a pain res is going to knock this gen down a bit. <clears throat> and just, actually, that wasn't pain res. Uh, they saved their stack or didn't have uh, the pain res nearby for them to use, so maybe their pain reses are all lumped against uh, around Shaq. And honestly, it looks like Ultra is not even interested in camping this out. Probably looking for a reset. Does find an injured survivor running, but doesn't seem to want to commit to them. Looks like instead of just sitting near the hook and camping like that, it seems like Ultra is just interested in holding like a cross uh, between the survivors and the hook and making sure nobody crosses to get that unhook. Especially with two survivors injured, this is not a bad play at all. Uh, unfortunately, I imagine. That might have been a bit of an interesting hit on the Nancy screen due to ping. We see our first gen uh, looking to be completed, but Merciless Storm is going to put a bit of a hold on that. And our first unhook comes out. <clears throat> the Zarina is getting the unhook on Quentin uh, before second, but our killer is going to be committing to kill this uh, Quentin here. And that is a down on him. <laughs> Ultra chooses not to pick right away, but instead to do a quick bit of pressure on his gens and then commit to picking up. Effectively keeping this gen from popping. And that's still not a pain res. I wonder where Ultra's pain reses are for him to not be using them. He must have some very uh, interesting RNG if they're not in either of these corners. They must be lumped uh, maybe on the backside of main or... Back, uh, behind the bus there for him to not be able to get a single pain res out that's pretty painful for our killer here but with everybody injured and this camp being somewhat free he can kind of just sit on the gen and sit on the hook very very comfortably and you know maybe get his win condition of a 4k2 if he plays this right and that is another merciless storm coming in unfortunately on that deep gen uh, that is a lot of uh, progress lost for our serves that they could be making. Considering Merciless has stopped, I believe, this gen right next to us and that gen. At this point, they would probably be at, a, at you know, two generators remaining. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's not going to happen because Merciless Storm is just giving so much value to Ultra here that he doesn't even really need Vayne Res. And that is the death, the first death of the game onto Jinxie. And it looks like Ultra is just controlling his uh, gen spread and seeing if he can find anybody caught off guard. Uh, Risa did come through on to Cookie here and he finds the Nancy. Oh! Oh, that guy, uh, unfortunately, I, I think got a bit violated. Oh my goodness. So, uh... <clears throat> That is going to be the down on our Nancy, and a hook coming through. That is the first pain res of the game used. Uh, I th and 
Honestly, uh, I'm not sure what gen that hit. It could have been a multitude of gens, considering so many gens were so far progressed. You'll notice earlier when he caught the Nancy out, he also saw a bunch of scratch marks kind of running away from it. So he should know that there's a survivor over here. And yeah, just like that, he does find more scratch marks on this gen. It's about 75%. <laughs> now he's going to be taking Chase onto our ace here on the shack. Unfortunately, you do not make that pallet when you are EU Tatane West. And now Cookie is going to be playing the four lane here and uh, does not make it to anything. And considering how far away that gen is, I don't think that. Our killer is, uh, excuse me, our survivor is going to be able to make it to the unhook. Um, so that might be a 4k3 coming through here. But it depends if Ultra is able to find our Zarina. No sign yet of a cross. Probably gonna go back to the slug, see if they can find the Zarina crossing. Maybe for the pickup instead of the pull. But it is all silent. Well, with no scratch marks uh, around, you should know that she's probably hiding in that dark corner where she popped the gen. <clears throat> if she's not crossing for the pull or the pickup. But I think our killer is just going to keep holding this cross to make sure that she cannot get either of these people uh, out of their very dire situation. And keep them from progressing any more gens. That is quite uh, a, an intense situation for the serves to be in, uh, considering how much gen pressure they had. Uh, Merciless Storm really did just keep them get, from getting those gens done while Ultra camped us out, and has ultimately kept them from getting any more gens done than what they have right now. He does find his arena. Finally, she was able to get the pickup onto our ace, and Ultra is just going to be content taking the chase onto our Zarina. And it looks like this is going to be a down, and most likely a slug for the 4k. I'm not too certain if Ace escaping from that hatch here would even grant them a tie or a win, but it doesn't look like it's going to matter as we're going to be taking Chase onto the ace. Our final chase of the game, most likely. And... Yeah, that is going to be a down coming through, as Cookie's not able to make any windows, not able to make the shack pallet. So, all it is going to take is to pick these two survivors and put them on the hook. Wow. Uh, just... Another <laughs> incredible performance, uh, from our killer. Uh, not really what you expect to see, but it's still pleasant to see nonetheless, to see killers uh, succeeding like this. <clears throat> Even against serves who can be so strong. <clears throat> but yeah, that's going to be a f uh, 4k3 for Ultra here, and therefore Cynic will be taking uh, the win on the first set. Once again, very... Uh, very well played from both teams. It was certainly a very strong performance from Ultra and Cookie. And, I mean, it, it, Ultra has really played around the win con perfectly, even denying um, them from getting even close to a tie. So, very well played. And GG's once again to both sides. The next set is a Mastermind set with Cynic killing first. That will probably be Ultra versus uh, Dead Futures Survivors. So I will see you all then on that set. And uh, I'm wishing good luck to both teams.
Okay, welcome back <clears throat> to the next set. We're gonna have Ultra on the Mastermind. Versus Dead Future Survivors once again. And you can see we have a full corrupt top side, not unusual for Cold Tower. And we're gonna see our killer moving to top mid just to look around, see if they see any surfs crossing through the sides of the map. It looks like our serves are uh, doing a decent job of stealthing, but uh, they started moving. <clears throat> and now our killer is going to be on top of the first chase. Onto Cookie on the Yunjin Lee. Ultra yeah. playing the pallet very patiently. Uh, the way Cookie stands there makes me believe he got hit by something he doesn't think he should have gotten hit by. But... Ooh. <laughs> a very, very fast down by our Ultra. Nice, uh, very confident dash around the corner. And a down onto Cookie. That is our first pain res of the game as well. Looks like his RNG is a little bit better this game. A little more in his favor. And looks like Ultra's just gonna be walking away. Maybe seeing if there's somewhere that he can utilize his pop. That's maybe worth it for him to use it. But honestly, with how fast that down is, I don't think that he really uh, needs to go use it. He could probably just sit here and do kind of exactly what he did last game. Just make sure that nobody is crossing to get this unhook. He does spot a couple survivors. He saw this arena and he <laughs> saw the Nancy working this gen, but no interest in pursuing them. Just pushing them off the gens, keeping them occupied while also making sure this survivor hits second stage. He does hear this gen <laughs> being progressed, but it's always just a threat. He's just making sure that they get as little progress as possible. And unfortunately, uh, with the, uh, you know, RNG skill check hitting that generator, that's going to be 10% lost on one of their few progressed gens. He pushes the head off, gives it a little kick, and then we will see if he goes back here. Yeah, he's going back. He catches the survivor out, going for the rescue. This is really bad. Honestly, they need to get Cookie off the hook here. You're still on five gens remaining. And you need to get them off so that you guys can make some worthwhile gen progress. And that unhook thankfully does come through for Team Dead Future here. He doesn't get the hit on Nancy, but that's fine. He's just going to make his way back to uh, the unhook and see if maybe he can, I assume, tunnel out Cookie here. Yep, that seems what he's doing. Just trying to find Cookie and uh, get him out of the game as fast as possible. <laughs> That's also the first generator of the game popping. And uh, yeah, he is on. Uh, he's on Cookie now. And honestly, I don't think. I don't know if Cookie makes his pallet. Oh, but he does! Due to uh, a little bit of a collision issue on this pallet, he's able to make the pallet as Ultra bumps. And unfortunately, uh, Cookie does not make that pallet with ping in play. I'm really surprised we haven't seen maybe an FTP come through here, but it looks like Ultra is just going to pick and hook. With uh, no DS on Mastermind, that looks like that is going to be the GG's for Cookie here. <laughs> and most likely hit pop on this gen. Depending how much gen pressure these serves have right now, it's very possible that they're not in a terrible position. They do pop another gen, but with 9 in play, there is a 4 gen top side. So, it's going to be very important that they, you know, start pressuring those gens and getting those out of the way before they end up in a position that, you know, they can't outplay with a good chase. <laughs> uh, you do not make that pallet, unfortunately. <laughs> Ultra's gonna try and use his power here to get it down on the Nancy, but overshoots a little bit, just barely missing her by a couple of inches. And she's able to make it back around to the Shack Pallet. <laughs> now she's just gonna see what she can do on the double window, but not even. She goes for the rock and then back to the double. And actually making a, a lot of good reads here. I mean, just... Keeping our killer occupied for as long as possible. And unfortunately... Oh! 
Never mind, a very good fate coming out. Uh, this survivor is uh, just doing a great job keeping the killer occupied. And they're actually now at uh, two gens because of that, that chase. Neither of the gens were able to be interrupted with uh, Pain Rest. So, this one will likely be the Pain Rest now. And whatever two gens the survivors are most likely splitting right now. But a very, very good chase for more Nancy. Uh, I'm sure that's going to be going in their montage. He does pressure this Claudette off one. And yeah, like I, like I thought, that chase bought them a lot of time. That gen is extremely progressed. The Claudette tries to fake the window, but Ultra knows better and chooses to be patient so that he doesn't vault straight through the window. That is our fourth generator of the game popping. A pop goes the weasel is going to be applied to one here, which it's about, honestly, 99, so it's probably going to be back down to 75 here now. And honestly, the serves have a very good chance of getting all the gens done here. I mean... They have a lot of progress on that one gen, even with the pop applied. If they can pull off another good chase and ensure this Nancy gets off the hook, they're in a good spot. However, that is a three gen top side, so it's possible that, you know, Ultra could hold it for uh, as long as he deems necessary. But we will see what he chooses to do here. I don't think he's going to commit. It looks like he's going to move up to one and just keep pressuring this generator. Make sure it doesn't pop. And it does pop. Oh my goodness. That Claudette. I assume the moment he left, she was back on that generator. That is a very impressive uh, gen pop from our serves here. And with no endgame in play. Uh, no, no way out. No, no. Way. It looks like our killer is going to be getting this down here. <laughs> And I assume the survivors are opening the gate across the map. But, yep, there's the door opening, and if they let this serve die, which they are, uh, that is going to be a 2k7 stage. That was uh, a very good performance, considering the position you were in early game. Uh, the ability to pop all the gens, and... You know, get two people out, one of which is a fresh hook. That is honestly very commendable. Uh, so, we'll see if the survivors in the next set can match or do better. Uh, and that will be Cynic on the serves, and we'll see that then. So, GG to both the killer and the serves, and I will see you all on that match.
Okay, we are back on round two of set two. Cynic versus Dead Future Mastermind on Coal Tower. <clears throat> and here we have Cookie on the Killer again. Playing our Mastermind for us versus the Cynic Serves. And we're going to be having a very early chase here. All Cynic has to do this round is get two survivors fresh out the door. Oh! Oh! Somehow the pallet dropped with the ace a mile away from it. And he also got hit through it, so... A very interesting first hit here. Coming out on our serves. I got Cookie is just content zoning here. And... Uh, unfortunately bumps into the... Uh, the, the hill here. I could have been a very early down, but unfortunately that is going to cost him a little bit of time. But our ace is still pretty zoned here. Uh, they're forced to play around check window, which is... Oh! Not easy, and yeah, Cookie plays that perfectly. I mean, perfectly reading what the survivor was going to do and how they were going to juke, and... That is going to be a very quick first down, and I assume a very quick pain res, but we will see. As you can see, we have pain res, brutal strength, and a little bit of end game to help our killer here secure the result that they need. All they need to do is get eight stages, as long as, uh, I believe, as long as... Yeah, I'm pretty certain the, uh, the win con is eight stages, considering last game was a 2k7. <clears throat> with one fresh out the door, so it is very much a very winnable condition for both teams here, for certain. We're gonna see, he does not have any interest in uh, tunneling here. It looks like he just wants to go for fresh hooks, which might not honestly be a terrible idea. With Noah in play, you can kind of just play for fresh hooks, play for as many points as possible. And that might give you the win con. I'm not too certain uh, what stages would look like if he got all four fresh hooks. What the win con would be, but it seems like that's how he's choosing to play. It. As he is committing to this Meg here. I believe he saw them run back in that corner, but... Yeah, it took, it took him a quick second to notice it, but... It's gonna be on our Nev here. And unfortunately, does not get the hits. Maybe trying to abuse Ping a little too much. <laughs> He does grab her through over. her vault and is going to be hopefully getting her on another pain res. Another pain hit res here would be very good. And he's once again choosing to leave the hook? Okay, maybe not. I think seeing Ultra has spurred him to uh, stay near the hook and make sure they don't just insta pull. Considering the way Ultra's walking, Cookie probably knows this is a sprint burst waiting to happen. <laughs> yep, yeah, that does look like a sprint burst. A good attempt on the dash there, but unfortunately the distance was just a little too too much for uh, Whiskers' power to uh, handle. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, does not get the hit on the window, but very close. And uh, we're gonna see maybe trying to take the window, and unfortunately, uh, that is not. Uh, a hit for Cookie here. <laughs> and now it looks like he's committing to the, uh, the tunnel out. And he doesn't read the serve correctly. I think this is going to be the down here. Yes, it is. So that is going to be the down on Nev and assumably the uh, second hook. Presumably. The second hook onto our Meg here. I will not. Actually, um, he never used the pain res on our Meg, so uh, it looks like he's going for the pain res, but he has to be careful. They could body block this, but they choose not to. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to stop either of those gens, but at the very least, he did get the unhook. Or he did get the hook, which is good, considering these serves could have body blocked in there, which would have been very, very troubling for uh, our killer here. But, looks like he's just taking the next chase onto our ace, which is who he's already hooked. So, I think that Cookie is just going to drop this and go for another fresh hook. Maybe try and find a different survivor. If he gets the fresh hook here, and then gets an gets Ultra in endgame with Noed, that could be very good for, uh, for Cookie points here. 
uh, points wise here. Actually, that that would <laughs> that would secure him the win if he got this hook and then got Cookie in endgame, because that would be all four fresh hooks on top of seven stages. <clears throat> and looks like Ninny is just 